Right here in this Northeast region, we have great access to world-class universities and research institutes, startups, and entrepreneurs, as well as companies that are all interested in accelerating technology for our soldiers. Aerial Northeast is one of the regional extended sites from Aerial's open campus model. It's an effort to get DOD research out from behind the fence and into the trenches with academia and industry. One of the great things about ARL Northeast and being in the Boston area is that we have a world-class ecosystem when it comes to tough tech and physical science innovation. Having that visibility really allows them to see, okay, so I know the Army is looking for this particular solutions, and I can think of this company, oh wait, I can think of this other company or university square, if they can partner together, it's gonna make a really synergistic and even better product. How do we accelerate the OODA loop in technology development? How do we accelerate the speed of the spiral of technology from research out into application? Well, this model has shown now some great successes. I mean, a new material system, for example, from research to transition into the field in 22 months, when typically a new material system takes, you know, five to 10 years to make it out into the marketplace. There's also a second reason why we want to be here, and that is we're trying to grow the future generation of scientists and engineers for our country. The UMass Lowell's motto is, is learning with purpose. I think that that's emblematic of the partnership that we have with ARL Northeast as scientists and engineers. We can end up sort of really focused on, on what the science is and not really thinking about what the impact it can have on society. And so having these, these partnerships with ARL helps us always keep that in mind and making sure that we're moving towards a goal and in this case to benefit the Army. The WPI education is inherently project-based. So our students from the ground up work in teams, interdisciplinary teams, for an external sponsor. So by working very closely with domain scientists that solve domain problems, and our students bring the data science expertise, this makes a perfect partnership. One of the problems that we're working on is corrosion. We have built technology in collaboration with CAIL that automatically collects corrosion data. It integrates it into one repository and it makes it ready for AI. Research that we're developing currently at WPI is going to be the research on which the technology for the soldiers will be based on in the future. We are in a region of the country where a lot of universities are doing uh, top research and we are also doing it in a very collaborative way. We are realizing that none of these universities have all the expertise that they need to solve problems. Therefore, we do not compete, but we collaborate. Partnership with ARL and MIT really hinges on the unique aspects of both organizations. From the Army side, we bring both domain-specific expertise as well as a set of really unique problems and challenges that you won't find other places. Our partners at MIT have responded to these questions with both great technical competence, but also some imagination and creativity that has really broadened our horizons as we think far into the future about what the war fighter might be. We started originally with a problem of building a bridge over a gap that evolved into structures that are robots and then how do they assemble themselves. We've ended up looking at, well, can we completely rethink the way we do robotic design? There's a lot of exciting research happening here at UMass Lowell in partnership with ARL Northeast, developing new products that can help the soldier in the field. Creative additive manufacturing techniques that allow us to combine different materials, which allow us to make much more effective propellant working with better materials for protection, whether or not it's helmet protection or body armor protection. And we've done some work with wearable sensors in human-robot interactions. UMass Lowell has evolved as a school which develop products and work very closely with industry. This innovation ecosystem where we have the Manufacturing USA Institutes as well as ARL and CCDC Soldier Center in Nerik, working together in one space allows us to translate discoveries into products which will be helping soldiers rapidly. The KRI partnership with ARL Northeast, they nest into each other. So it follows the actual open campus model that ARL has. We like to incorporate and we plan to incorporate government, academia, and industry in one location to foster relationships, collaboration, and to get innovative research out of the academic laboratories and the industry laboratories into the government labs to ultimately 
help transitions out to the warfighter. The university researchers, the great people that we have here on this technical staff on this campus, company partners, etc., working with sophisticated facilities like Coliseum, the world's largest emulator for RF environments, advanced manufacturing like cold spray, the Faraday cage facility where we can do sophisticated experiments in secure communications. We can even do electromagnetic pulse experiments. And then of course, very large drone cage where we can do studies of autonomy, etc. At Aero, we've developed a very core expertise in what we do. We have a very unique ability to do this rapid discovery, high-end research, but then hand it off to an industrial partner. It's not the appropriate role of a research facility, whether it be a university or the Army Research Lab, to think about commercial scaling of a technology, to really bridge that gap between the technology and the final product. But we do that here. We build a bridge across what's called the valley of death for technologies, from its initial proof of concept to this refinement that you need for it to be a final product. So the way I think about it is we make stuff. We make real physical stuff we're able to take the technologies that we're developing here at Veloxin, specifically nanostructured materials and metals, making them into components that customers like the Army care about. That means making it in sizes, shapes, and volumes that the Army needs in order to actually make use of these sorts of technologies. Partnering with ARL is really a great collaboration for PPG because typically our research, we just get insights from customers and it's very market focused whereas the ARL researchers are more fundamental focused. And so we can get some more long-term fundamental research into our research center and focus on problems that they have. We do a lot of work in scaling up new products, taking it just from an idea in the lab all the way to the front lines. There's a revolution going on right now in the composition of vehicles. So there's uh, lighter weight alloys, there's composite materials, and one of the issues with using these materials is joining them together so they can produce safe, crash-worthy structures. So these new class of structural adhesives allows for the manufacture of crash-worthy vehicles, but also they're lighter weight, which will reduce fuel consumption and generally reduce overall pollution to the environment. We're looking ahead into a space where we call multi-domain operations and even beyond multi-domain operations. So there are technology needs and there are capability needs by our soldiers. We want to be able to give them the technology and the capabilities they need as quickly as possible. Veluxon also gives me an opportunity to continue my service to the nation, specifically looking at challenges that I faced as a commander in the field with survivability and lethality of my soldiers. Lightweighting, strengthening, anything we can do to lighten the load on the individual soldier to provide more durability to their equipment, to provide more survivability to their equipment, and themselves will help the individual soldier. I myself used to be that soldier in the field. What I found during my time is sometimes you would get a equipment or a technology that had very little use. So it would get out to the field, you could tell it was developed strictly in a lab, and it didn't have the right or the correct applications that the soldier needs. At KRI, we keep that in mind. We want to provide the soldier something that will be useful to them, so we want to include the soldier in all of our development projects. This is what it's all about here, bringing together companies, government, universities, those here on campus, those outside the campus, those across the Northeast region and Middle Atlantic states, really allowing us to advance technologies for the benefit of the warfighter.